Good day, I'm Jeff Rouse, checking in from Fairmont City offices again. And today, look who I ran into. How you doing? Hi, Jeff. Of course, how are you today? I know who you are. Share with the folks who you are. Hi, I'm Libby Bloomquist, and I'm the city attorney for the city of Fairmont. Absolutely correct. Thank you. <laughs> so how long have you been with the city? 29 years. Congratulations well, to you. you. That's very exciting. Well, we just, as I was saying, just got done shooting a new episode of Martin County on TV. And it's sure to be a very popular one. Sounds great. Would you like to see one? I would. Well, let's go to one right now. And joining me again is our favorite one of our favorite guest hosts, Lenny. It. How are you doing, Lenny? Good seeing you. Good. Glad you're back. Thank you. Glad you're back. I'm glad to be have here. you had a good month? Absolutely. Well, uh, every month is good. Every month is good. And the audience really enjoyed when you were on last time because uh, well, you're you're a source of knowledge. You you know about Martin County. We appreciate that. Think I've got him fooled? Then? Absolutely. Okay, Keep good. up the good work. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Well, we have some great things to show the folks today. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have. First one, I have Randy Musser uh, talking about some buildings here in town. It was done in 2003 on Hometown Focus. Uh, do you know anything about this report? Have you seen anything that Randy did? He did this with you, did he not? Yes, he did. And Randy, of course, is a lifelong resident of Martin County. Uh, well great, known. Well known, great resource, uh, very interested in history. And uh, he has a lot of, you know, he was, a, I think, a building inspector. He worked for the city. That's right. So he has a, a great working knowledge of the buildings in the community. So I contacted him to do this interview, and he provided some very good information about, about these buildings. Well, this was on, like I said, the Hometown Focus Show mm -hmm. in 2003. So why don't we take a look? Sounds good. This is Lenny Tweeden the Martin County Historical Society. Uh, today we're going to visit with Randy Musser a little bit about some buildings in town and uh, uh, look at the history of them. But first of all, uh, Randy, can you give us a little background on yourself, what you do, and how you became interested in uh, buildings? Well, I'm the city fire marshal, and of course, uh, being born and raised in the Fairmont area, I've been very interested in uh, Martin County history and uh, mainly the buildings. It's a lot of fun coming down here to the Pioneer Museum to do the research and uh, find out uh, a lot about these buildings. Okay, good. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is the location where Central School is now. And if you can tell us a little bit about what was there at one time and maybe the years in which uh, this took place. Well, first of all, the Fairmont Public Schools, like you say, all three buildings were located on the Central School grounds uh, at that time. In 1902, uh, all three buildings sat on that site. Uh, the first building was built in uh, 1886, and it was located right in the center of that block. And later in the years, uh, it housed the third through the sixth grades. Uh, the next building that was put up was put up like in 1895, and that was located on the, uh, the northeast corner of that uh, particular block, and that held the lower grades later on when the high school was built. Next was the high school, and the high school was built, of course, in the south, uh, that would be the southwest corner, and that was built or finished in 1902. Uh, that's the way the schools were set at that particular point, and that's how they were used until in about uh, uh, 1928, uh, they were demolished, and the high school at that time uh, was built at the corner of Prairie and uh, Second Street, which became the high school. And uh, uh, going down the line, Central School was, uh, was built in about uh, uh, that same era. Uh, the, the lot was uh, completely demolished. Central School was built, the high school was built, and that's the way the school systems were until 1955, and that's mm -hmm. when the middle school was built, and of course the high school built later on. Uh, the old high school, which was uh, at the corner of uh, 2nd and uh, North Prairie, burnt down in about 1970-71. They had a couple arson fires that took the mm -hmm. building completely down, and that's when we decided we needed a new high school. <laughs> Uh, looking at the three schools here on the present Central School location, it appears that we're, if I'm looking at it right, we're looking toward the east, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the high school, as you can see, is on the uh, right-hand side, 
Okay. And these buildings were very excellent for their time, being built particularly of uh, uh, brick, uh, made right here in uh, Fairmont at the Brick and Tile Company. Oh, okay. sure. All right, thank you. Let's uh, take a look at another building here, and this was... Uh, the city hall and fire, uh, firehouse. Yes, this was this was the old city hall. It was located on First Street, uh, just to the west. Uh, matter of fact, of Central School. It was kind of located on the alley. Uh, this building was built in 1908 at a cost of twelve thousand dollars. The main reason that the city built this was to house the fire department, but also it housed the council chambers, the city jail, uh, the city engineer, and the National Guard offices before the armory was built. Uh, the two large doors in the front of the building were there for the fire wagons. What happened was uh, the horses were stored around behind the building when the fire alarm went off or the fire bell went off or the whistle at that time, the horses would be brought around to the front of the building, backed into the building, quick harnesses would come down from the ceiling and they would hook up to the horses and away they would go with the fire wagon. Well, uh, as time went by, uh, in 1923, Fairmont bought its first uh, motorized fire truck, which you have down in the basement of the Pioneer Museum. 1923 La France? That's, that's the one. Uh, the horses were still used up until about uh, uh, 1930s. They pulled the other wagons. Uh, the uh, most famous uh, team that they had was the Dapple Gray team. The other interesting thing is, is this was also the city working horse team. In other words, they may be someplace in the city and the alarm would go off, they would have to take the horses, rush them down to the fire station, hook up to the fire wagons or ladder truck, and then go to the scene. Well, I can imagine how tired these poor horses were by the time they got to the, uh, the actual fire scene. Probably didn't make it as fast as they would today. That is correct. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this building sat on its present site. The fire station sat there until 1952, and that's when uh, the new fire station on 4th Street was built. And uh, the building was demolished uh, in uh, 1987, uh, and the, uh, the city hall, of course, has moved to its particular spot right now on 1st Street. Okay. Next one we'll take a look at is right on downtown plaza and this was at one time known as the Sinclair building? That's correct. It was first known as the Sinclair building, uh, later on to be known as the KC building or the KC Hall. This building, uh, well they started to build it in about 1895 but they didn't finish it until about 1899. It's located on the southeast corner of First and Downtown Plaza and it's owned by Wally Pack. There are two businesses in this particular building. Uh, the one business, of course, is the Blazer Bar, and the other one is for old time's sake, which is Lori Huffman's antique shop. Uh, the Sinclairs themselves is a very interesting story. They were part of the original uh, English colony that came to Martin County in 1870 and did a lot of developing. They were very prominent people in the community. As a matter of fact, they did a lot of developing around the Woodland and um, uh, Albion Avenue area. Matter of fact, uh, the Homewood Drive area still holds the plat name of the Sinclair edition. Yeah. So a lot of that area was used in that particular way. Uh, there's been many uses of the building. Uh, the, uh, there was, when it first was developed, there was like lawyers and dentists and abstractors and small offices in this building. Uh, later on, the whole building became a dry goods store. Uh, Hicks and Getz uh, had a mercantile store there. Uh, there was the Barden Dry Goods Store in later years. Uh, and about the 1930s, it became a grocery store. The grocery store started out to be Sterling Foods, later on was renamed to Sterling Grocery. And that served until, oh, about the uh, late 50s in that particular area. There's also uh, a little drugstore there on the corner, which was uh, uh, run by a Mr. Edwards. It later on became the city hub, oh, and it was a popular place. It had a very nice fountain in it, and it was a nice coffee shop. It was a very nice place for the downtown area people to come in. 
Uh, and one time that even held uh, the Chamber of Commerce in that little corner. What an ideal spot for the chamber at the time, you know. Looks like there's a sign on, on, the, on the side of the building where there might have been a dentist, is that? That's, that's correct. There were various dentists. As a matter of fact, the upper level, the third floor, was used as a dance floor. The KC's had a big dance floor up there. The basement was even used. There was various uh, barber shops, various barbers that had shops down below there, two main ones. Matter of fact, the last one there, uh, still part of the community, Tom Syme, had that barber shop down there. And uh, there was uh, uh, particular barbers, various barbers around town use that particular facility. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Randy. Appreciate it. This is Lenny Tweeten for Hometown Focus. A very interesting report. Right. Very nice. You can tell uh, Randy has a uh, passion for these old buildings, oh, too. Absolutely. And what a great source. The two of you worked well together. Oh, thank you. Very good. Uh, the next segment is our old friend Marnie's back. <laughs> and uh, this is from a 1995 uh, story that she did uh, for Must Be Hometown Focus, obviously, by the date. And it's about old courthouses. Uh, we have, as well, I'm stating the obvious to you, an incredible courthouse. Right. So, uh, um, are there some more, some other things in the museum that kind of share those kind of uh, stories? Well, you know, it's the third courthouse. The first courthouse was a wooden building built for two hundred dollars, and uh, in the eighteen hundreds. In eighteen hundreds, and this one was built in nineteen oh six, completed in nineteen oh seven. Wow. So we have pictures of when it was being built and the uh, county commissioners that were involved at the time. And uh, we have that information on a PowerPoint presentation as well. So well, awesome. Well, let's check out Marnie's report from 1995. Fairmont is the county seat for Martin County and its courthouse is full of rich history as reported by Marnie Broat in this 1995 piece. Two Martin County courthouses have done duty here before the present courthouse was built. For about 20 years, in the middle of 1800s, we had a very small white building about where the Martin County courthouse now is, near the Martin County Bank. But about in um, 19, 1882, the second Martin County courthouse was built. Then, it was a two-story building, housed five offices, two vaults, two jail cells, and a four-room jailer's residence. That building was constructed of brick veneer. It served until 1906, when the present three-story courthouse was built. And here she stands in all her glory, located in the western part of the city of Fairmont on an eminence of ground overlooking beautiful Lake Sisseton. The first story is of Marquette ra Raindrop Sandstone. The second and third stories are limestone, both from Wisconsin. The structure from floor to top of dome is 108 feet. On entering, one can see the ground floor is divided into various offices. These offices could be the Veterans Service Office, the Minnesota Extension Office, and so forth. Then, on the second floor, we find the county auditor, treasurer, and county recorder. And you know that is just one of the most interesting offices as all of the county real estate transactions are recorded here. This second floor is also the area where one can cross over a walkway into the security building. There we find court services, the county assessor, the office of the county coordinator, county commissioner meeting room, and the Martin, Martin County jail facilities are all accessible from here. On the third floor, we find the district court chambers, the courtroom, and the law li library. The corridors and rotunda on the second and third floors are spacious and fitted with settees for accommodation of tours and public viewing of the glorious panoramic paintings. As we look up to the south, we view the painting entitled War. This painting represents all evil and the destruction of prosperity. On the east wall is the painting entitled Inspiration. The left figure represents glory. The center figure, light, and the intellect of the mind. 
The right figure represents power of thought holding the symbol of the court in the hand. On the north wall is the painting entitled Peace. The center figure here represents Minnesota with the Horn of Plenty blessing our area of industry, mechanics, and education. The Indian is watching as the county is rapidly changing from a land of forests and prairie to industry and agriculture. On the west wall is the painting Genius, showing the North Star, which is presented here, and that is the Great Seal of Minnesota. The seal is decorated with the state flower, the moccasin, or also called the dressy lady's slipper. We are now entering the courtroom, an awesome area, where we treat our judges with great respect. We view photographs of past judges, and also the court recorder and judges' benches, and the jury box. Above the judges' bench are two murals. The artist was German-born Franz Edward Rohrbeck. He came to America in 1885. There are 20 courthouses in the United States decorated by Rohrbeck, and it's including the Martin County Courthouse. The name of the mural to the right is Sentence. Justice is standing with the scale in hand. Law is reading, and mercy begs a moderation of the law. The mural to the left is the execution. The power of the law is reading the sentence from the tablet. Execution is in the middle, ready to carry out the sentence. The prisoner in chains represents the power of the court. The highest point in Fairmont, the clock tower, is accessible only by ladder and not open to the public. Through the clock and in four directions, we view almost all of Martin County. We invite you to pause and please consider visiting your Martin County Courthouse soon. Take the time to wander and absorb your Martin County government history. Well, that was a good report by Marty. Great. Right. I thought yeah. she did. Very interesting. Definitely. Very interesting. Uh, the next segment is from Out of the Past that, again, you did with us, with our story, mm -hmm. uh, in 2007 with Mike Gary. Tell me a little bit about Mike Gary. Well, Mike Gary is a real promoter of Fairmont, very positive. And the Gary family, they're just very, very positive and good people. And they have a lot of uh, just desire to make Fairmont great. And they've been uh, really good supporters of the Historical Society as well. Uh, and he's going to talk about Frank Day, who was uh, started the Sentinel with Colonel Bullard back in 1874. And Frank Day ha was also into politics, and he was just very well liked by everyone in the whole state what, and the surrounding area. What period was uh, uh, Frank Day uh, he, dominant here? In the 20s? In the, in no, late 1800s and the early 1900s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he was just a very positive force again in, in Martin County and promoting Martin County. He loved Martin County, he loved Fairmont. Well, let's see what Mike Gary has to say Sounds good. about Frank Day. This is Lenny Tweeden, and today I'm going to visit with a longtime resident of Fairmont, Mike Gary. And uh, he has some very interesting things to say about uh, a person that was significant in Fairmont's past, Frank Day. Um, Mike, I know I'm just going to lead into this with something you told me I thought was really interesting. You actually had seen Frank Day or had met Frank Day, and I think you said your dad worked for him, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yes, Lenny. Uh, 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 Frank Day. Uh, came to uh, Fairmont in 1890 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my uh, and he bought the the uh, what was then maybe it was the Martin County Sentinel but he bought the Fairmont Sentinel mm -hmm. he was financed and backed by by uh, uh, Mr. Bo Mr. Bullard and Mr. Bullard uh, uh, eventually years after that uh, bought the uh, or built the uh, uh, the Bullard house Okay, Which so he was a hotel man then. He was a hotel man. Hmm? And eventually, like many around here still remember, uh, the name was changed to the Edgewater Inn. The man that really had been, was really familiar came in about 1900. That was uh, uh, Major... Uh, Nelson? Nelson, right. Okay. And he was, uh, you know, he, he was famous for his editorials, famous for his writings. He worked and, with Day then, too, at the Sentinel. Yeah, yes, he did. And, you know... He, 
Frank Davis sold him. Uh, he, he had a financial interest in the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. And Major Nelson, you know, uh, was a, a staunch supporter of our museum here, mm -hmm. uh, along with Judge Haycraft and Mrs. Nightingale and all the Edmonds. You know, he was only 21 years old mm -hmm. when he came here and, and bought the uh, Sentinel. Uh, he came here from Esterville. My father was uh, about four or five years younger than uh, Frank Day. They had a name for people who worked in the uh, newspaper, and they call them printer's devil. And th their job was to do the job that nobody else would want to do. <laughs> and uh, so that was the job my dad had. It was kind of interesting to know that uh, if nobody else wanted to, he'd have to go down and meet the trains. Oh. He all, they always had a newspaper reporter uh -huh. when the train came in. And they wanted to know, and, and they, people were very cooperative. You'd have to go up and say, where did you come from and where are you going? He was a good man to work for and a mm -hmm. good man to... Uh, well respected and well liked in the area. Very, very much. Uh, he was so well respected. I know my father had happy memories that he could drive him to any, any special banquet. He drove Frank Day to the opening house at the Foster House, across from, which was a hotel across from the uh, uh, Opera House. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was, that was right to the west then, wasn't it? Right across the street to e the west. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frank Day lived uh, where Jerry Gresher uh, lives right now on, on Woodland? Woodland Avenue. All right. He was a big promoter of Fairmont. You know, uh, he, uh, uh, he ran a, uh, a great newspaper, great editorials, <clears throat> and uh, he, was, he was outstanding in, uh, in promoting Fairmont. Frank Dave, with a couple others, did a tremendous amount in, in uh, supporting and giving, giving Fairmont a big boost in the... One of, one of the shapers of the community from the past. It's certainly, yeah. it's certainly right, uh, okay. Lenny. Well, we are running out of time. Is there, are there any closing comments you want to make about Frank Day from your recollection or from your father's recollection? Well, there was, there was great people that followed, and I, I don't recall... It uh, is now, but uh, uh, Major Nelson carried on. There mm -hmm. were some awfully great people at the Sentinel. Okay. So, sure enjoyed visiting with you, Lenny. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate uh, the information you can provide us from the past in Fairmont. This is Lenny Tweeten for our story from out of the past about Frank Day. I love that report, Lenny. Oh, it was great. That was great. And you know, uh, Mike. I could listen to Mike all day. Oh, he's got so much he, knowledge he, about Martin County. So much Charlie. knowledge and obvious passion. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and even the way he tells the story is just, it's right. just wonderful. So that was a great report. Good job on that. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, focus on Fairmont to a report done by Marty Brot. Marty did a lot of reports. Marty did a lot of reports, yeah. Uh, uh, in those early days. And right. always a good job. Right. Always a good job. So this is one that she did about the Chubb House. So why don't we take a look at that? Sounds good. Volunteers are taking an historic building in Fairmont and returning it to its turn-of-the-century charm. Marnie Brot has this report on the Chubb House. The pioneers of Martin County each has a story and a place in our history. Dr. Orville Chubb was one. Buried in Lakeside Cemetery among the Ward and Day families, Dr. Chubb's marker rests on land he helped plat and overlooks the city of Fairmont, which he assisted in founding and developing. A man of many abilities, Chubb left his impact on Martin County. As a surveyor, he laid out the town site of Fairmont, the first cemetery and the first fairgrounds. A Civil War surgeon, Dr. Chubb was appointed the first county physician, served as a court commissioner, county treasurer, county superintendent of schools, and the postmaster. He also built bridges and owned, among other things, a sawmill, drugstore, and a newspaper. One of his legacies is the home he built overlooking Lake Sisseton. What makes this house unique? Why did a group of citizens save it from the wrecking ball in 1992? Let's find out. Located at 209 Lake Avenue, the Chubb House is the only example of Greek architecture in the immediate area. Its symmetrical, evenly balanced roof lines are characteristic of the Greeks' attention to perfectly proportioned details. 
Built in 1867, it was the first brick house in Martin County. The bricks were fired from clay taken from the south shore of Buffalo Lake, just north of Fairmont. Another interesting feature of the house is the foundation and basement. Large field stones were set together with mortar and scored to give a block effect. The contractor, John R. Dalton, who lived to be 100 years old, said in order to find enough stones to finish the cellar, as he called it, they had to remove some stones from Lake Siston behind the house. He received $3 a day for his team and wagon and $4 for himself. A hand-hewn beam is also easily visible in the basement. The south room of the house was added to the original home about 1900. Another addition was built in 1937. The house was purchased by the Martin County Preservation Association in September of 1992 for $35,000 and volunteers began the renovation process. Their goal? To restore the interior to the early 1900s. Wallpaper was painstakingly stripped layer by layer and samples of each preserved. Many kinds of wood and square nails were found throughout the house. For example, walnut wood was sandwiched in between the casings of the doors and windows, testifying that the contractor took advantage of materials at hand. It is of interest to note the angle and depth of the windows in the original part of the house. They were made to let in the greatest amount of light and also accommodate the thickness of the brick walls. Volunteers repaired floors and enhanced the beauty of the original six-inch wide fur board flooring. The exterior of the Chubb House was also given a facelift. Steps were replaced, wooden shutters hung, and landscaping improved. Wooden shingles were put back on the roof to help the exterior of the house return to its original look. Volunteers from the Rolling Green 4-H Club spent several days picking up old shingles around the house. With the help of Lutheran Brotherhood, a handicap accessible wooden door was put in the sunroom where the original door led to the spacious backyard of the home. The Chubb House volunteers like to have visitors tour the house, watch the progress, and learn a little history of one of Martin County's early pioneer families. Open houses are held and gingerbread with warm caramel sauce is served as perhaps Sarah Chubb would have done years ago. Memorabilia is always available. Chubb birdhouses are made, mugs, t-shirts, and stationery are also for sale. The Chubb House is now listed on the National Registry of Historic Places because of the structure of the house and the significance the original owner, Dr. Orville Chubb, played in the development of Fairmont and Martin County. For Focus on Fairmont, I'm Marnie Broad. Another good job by Marnie. That right. was a very interesting report. And on the Chubb House, if we, when we come down to the museum, what would we find or can additional things that we can learn about the Chubb House? Well, we have pictures and history on Dr. Chubb, uh, Dr. Orville Chubb, uh, and that was, of course, the house that he lived in. And interesting thing about Dr. Chubb is that he was in the Civil War. As a result of his experiences in the Civil War, he was really fed up with medicine and being a doctor, but he agreed that he would stay in Fairmont and be their doctor until a suitable uh, doctor was found to replace him. So that's the interesting thing about him. And we again have him on PowerPoint presentations and we have a lot of history and pictures of Dr. Chubb as well. Great, well we'll definitely come down and check that out. Again, Lenny, I can't thank you enough for guest hosting. Thank a you. pleasure. Appreciate and, it. And uh, you're not off the hook yet because we're gonna have you back oh, on okay. for some more Pernod episodes. So. Well, the pay is good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks again, Lenny, very much. You're welcome. That was great, Jeff. Wasn't it? Yes. Lenny always you. does a great job, and it's fun to show some of these historic uh, spots and different things that have been done over the years. So we're very proud to share that with the folks. So it's nice seeing you. It's good to see you too, Jeff. And uh, we want to thank our viewers for watching. And as we share with you the sponsors that made this show possible, remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.